Welcome everybody once again for our fourth presentation on the business recovery and improvement series. I'm Brendan Taylor and I'm joined by Karen Hills and uh, you'll be hearing from Karen shortly. Just as a reminder, the previous three presentations were on finance, cash flow and budgeting for one. The second was workforce and HR issues. The third was the last week, the out of date business concepts, marketing and the business diagnostic tools. So if you missed out on watching those presentations, you might wanna jump onto our website to see the recordings of these presentations of practical and simple ideas for business improvement. Also, just as a note of interest, um, there's Q and A button at the bottom of your screen. So please ask questions as you go. We'll answer them on the hop if we can. Um, so today we're looking forward, concentrating on goals, strategy, focus and planning, and mostly by using simple tools. So being involved in a business is not really that complicated, yet we seem to want to make it very hard at times. We get bogged down in the day to day, dealing with the customer, the staff issues, organising supplies, paying the bills. I'm sure you've heard a hundred times the quote that you should be working on your business, not in your business. Now, never really known exactly what it means, but it's probably something like this. You should get away from the detail, the micromanaging and tasks that others should be doing and concentrate on the big picture, the management, the leadership and the strategy. Business owners tend to be poor at delegating and end up doing too much themselves, not leaving the time to manage and lead and plan. So today is your chance to look into your business from the high level, the outside, the big picture. No matter the size of your business or the extent that you bring in the bulk of the business income, there's always a place to stop and review and reset. You really are the one who should be setting the direction of the business, providing the leadership for your employees to follow, keeping the business on track, remaining on the ball to deal with the unexpected events. While, while you should be constantly aware of the major components of the business, that is you know, your sales, products and services, the customers, the workforce, your supply product, finance, and the premises and facilities, you probably don't need to get involved in the detail of all of these all the time. So we use tools to assist you in focusing on the big picture. Shortly, Karen will demonstrate a number of these tools to give you some direction. Then hopefully you'll be able to see how simple concepts that you may not have previously considered can enable you to see your business in a new way. There is no science to this approach. We tend to start with why. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is your purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Then we bring it down a level to goals. You know, what are your short, medium and long-term goals? You would think this exercise is pretty easy, but it's amazing how difficult some business owners find answering these questions. It's a bit like the meaning of life, too big to even contemplate, so let's not do it. That is why just writing your purpose and goals to paper or screen, if that's your thing, is a major step to getting to taking back control of your business. Sometimes we need a life-changing experience or a tragedy or a major event to make you contemplate the why. And that's where many of us are at at the moment. We appear to have survived COVID, cross fingers, Yes, it was a major upheaval for many businesses and still is for some, but this has opportunity written all over it. And we've been saying this for the last 10 months now. Let's not waste this opportunity. We have the chance to look at things in a different light. And when I say we, I mean us and you. So just by way of example, and this theme will run through the rest of our presentation for today. Let me introduce you to Tim and Tina. Tim and Tina were looking to get out of their mundane jobs and set up the hardware business, Tim the Toolman, two years ago in a coastal WA town. 
they sell standard range building hardware and they're independent. They had an initial burst of sales in that first summer when they first started up. Then business tailed a lot, off a lot during the winter seasonally and that could be explained. But then leading into the next summer, it was still didn't really pick up to the same level as it did the year before. They couldn't understand why, as they continued to provide the same product range and what they thought the same quality service. Then COVID hit and they didn't know what to do. So like everyone else, they closed their doors. After only a week, they reopened due to customer demand. Since then, the sales have gone nuts, but they have a number of issues. Two staff left, there are only two staff left. One to FIFO, one to the building trade. They can't even find anyone to work. They're having trouble getting supply of product. They are stressed and wondering whether to go back to their jobs. What do they do next? They did the smartest thing possible and reached out to their accountant, Karen Hills, for guidance. <laughs> so over to you, Karen. Thanks, Brendan. I'm not sure if that's going to flick over to me. Yeah, you should. <laughs> There you go. Um, so yes, I guess when client approaches us, we've got a couple of different options. You generally have clients that either approach you because they want to look forward as to what the next paragraph means for them or next chapter means for them, or you've got the clients that are really trying to band-aid a situation that's a little bit not working for them. And I think most of us are probably in that band-aid sort of situation at the moment. And we've got a really simple tool that we use to action what the next steps can be. Because when you're in that situation, the problems that you're looking at can really seem quite mountainous and you don't even know where to start in order to kind of chip away at that and get to that next stage where you don't have the problems. So I'm gonna show you a really simple tool, which we call Now We're How, and you've probably seen it in various forms over the time frame. Um, I think the video has gone back to you, Brendan, but anyway. Sorry. Okay. Um, You've probably seen it in you know, various different aspects and all the rest, um, but this is just the way that we do it. So I'm going to screen share and talk you through the process and I'm probably going to stop my video while I'm doing that. So just give me a moment. Probably should have cleared that. Right, so hopefully everyone can see what I've got going on there. And I'm just going to give you a bit of an idea. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, well, what are the three most pressing things with my business at the moment? You know, firstly, um, for Tim and Tina, they are having an issue with getting employees, which is probably quite common for most people at the moment. Uh, number two is sub those supply issues. And number three is, you know, competing with the big buyer groups. Now, these are all really big issues and it'd be a natural tendency to not really know which one is going to be the best to tackle first or which one's going to get you the best results. The funny thing is that our brain actually prioritizes the things for us that are the most painful. Um, so rather than trying to establish which one's going to work best, just go with it, go with the natural selection of it and know that the way it's come out of you is actually the way that you're going to tackle it. So you're going to tackle it from number one going down. What we're then going to do is we're going to overlay our now where how onto those issues. So you're going to create three columns. I'm going to squish this in a little bit, so I apologize. And it's called now, where, and how. It's a natural tendency for people to jump straight from, here's my problem, how am I going to fix it? But the problem is that unless you actually put a peg in the sand and figure out where you are now, and unless you figure out where you want to be, you might not necessarily be going down the correct path for you, for your business, and to get you in the direction of where you want to go. So you can't fix things until you have a visual of what that direction is. So the first thing you're going to do is look at where you are now. You need to describe your current situation in bullet point form and have a really clear understanding of the key elements that actually affect that point. Um, so 
let's look at the first one, for example. Um, right now, I've got two business participants working and I've got no backup. Um, you know, getting employees is really, really difficult. So supply issue, for example, you're going to look at that one. You're going, hey, well, currently um, supply is inconsistent. Uh, delivery times have stretched out. Um, and, you know, international trade has slowed. And then my last thing is competing with buyer groups. Now, that's not necessarily something I can easily fix. You know, I'm not going to be able to compete with the Bunnings in the world. But what I want to be able to do is I want to not only have one point that I'm selling to, which is like, you know, the mum and dad down the road that are working on their house. Um, I want to at least have some options to stretch and broaden my customer base. So where I'm at now is, you know, I'm only selling to mum and dad down the road. Um, I don't have any consistent consumers. So that's pretty much taking a look at where I am now. It's putting my peg in the sand and going, okay, this is where I am. How am I going to get to the next stage? So the next step to do is basically go, right, where would I like to be in 12 months time and it doesn't have to be 12 months time it can be three months time it can be three years time it's really up to you to determine that time frame but just keep in mind that whatever your time frame is depends on how aspirational that next point is going to be because with a shorter time frame that jump isn't going to be as big you're just not going to be able to achieve it so you want to scale that into be relevant to the time frame that you're actually talking to so if we say for example a 12 month time frame it's normally a good kind of starting point and you go okay well what is my future of these issues and those wares really need to talk back to that vision and business statement. You know, the things that you probably developed and last looked at when you did a business plan, because it's one of those things that when we're enthusiastic about what we're doing, we come up with these great visions and missions, and then we kind of lose the focus as we get, you know, bogged down into the detail. So have those wares talk to that vision, um, and they really need to kind of rein or keep in mind your competitive advantage um, and you know what's making you unique in the field that you do. So if you go, okay, well, getting employees, where do I want to be? I really want to have two employees plus the two business participants. I want to make sure that at any point the business participants can leave. Um, I want to be an employer of choice. So supply issues, I need to develop some stronger relationships. I need to have consistent supply. Um, and I need to actually look source local. You know, up until now, I've managed to get a lot of my tools or whatever overseas. And I think that now is the time to make sure that I'm supporting the local person. Um, competing buyer groups, uh, really what I want to do here is I want to have two to three builders as um, my customer. So you wouldn't necessarily do more than say two to three on each of these points because otherwise it can extrapolate out really fast and then you've got too many tasks and with too many tasks, we kind of just stop doing anything. So it's really important to keep it quite simple. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is break it down into how. Well, how am I going to do these? What are the actions that I'm going to do or the strategies that I'm going to put into place in order to get and bridge the gap between the now and the where, and basically I can create that. So how am I gonna to get two more employees? Well, you know, it's gonna be the standard, I'm gonna source them here, or I'm going to train there, or I'm gonna look at my, um, my plan, my business plan, and realize that 
I'm more concerned about someone's enthusiasm than their technical skills and I'm willing to train them. So then I'm going to source a trainee or, you know, it opens up the opportunities of always having to immediately patch something, but rather talk to that long big picture because you're going to get long lasting and decent results. So you'll build out your house. And then one of the really important things is to not leave it at that because otherwise it's not a working document. What you really need to do is assign it to someone and give it a completion date. And if you're not doing that, if you're not assigning it to someone or giving it a completion date, you're never going to talk to it. It's never going to get done. Um, and if somebody doesn't take the responsibility for the action, it's not actually going to get finalized. So after that, um, you'd basically, the next step of doing that is to build your one page plan. So when we start off in business, we tend to build a business plan and it's quite complicated and it's a 11 to 20 page plan with the SWOT analysis and all the rest. And that's great. And it's really important. But as we progress through business, we don't have the time to go back to that and re-establish it. And you've got a change in scenario, but you're not going to go back and change a 20 page document to make sure that it's relevant for your business. So creating something that's a one page plan, like it's a visual picture of exactly the direction your business is going at any point. So that if any employee, bank, you know, your service providers, you know, your accountants, your lawyers, if anybody was kind of like, where are you at? What's the go? What do you need help with? You've got your one page plan. You can go, this is me on a page. This is exactly the direction that our business is going to right now. And you want to try and create that for short term and long term goals. So for right now, the general rule is that you don't try and extend it past sort of a three month cycle. Your longer goals should obviously be bigger, but your three month cycle is you just have short, sharp little implementations and successes that talk to that longer goal. So it kind of feeds back through as you kind of do this. And I'll just show you an example of what a one page plan looks like. And I just realized I have to share my screen. So basically you can see that the now where how that I've just spoken about feeds back through onto this. So you've got your now, so this is a little bit more detailed than what I just drew up, but it's the same thing. You've got your revenue, your employees, you've got um, consistent supply issues, your customer base is all your private sector, the, you know, the owners don't have an exit strategy and you're getting a lot of increase from larger companies. Um, so the where is, where am I going to? What is the time frame on that? You know, and what is that going to look like? And then you break it down into your strategies. You know, it's your, these are your hows, the different things that I'm going to do to implement to actually affect that change. Those are then broken down further into your action plans. And those action plans always have a 30 day to a three month turnaround. So while your where's can be long term, your hows should always be short term. So, that's all good and well when you have not a crisis, but you know, you've got pain points, you've got, you've got pressure in the workplace that's kind of causing you to investigate or change something that you're doing. But over time, you know, those pain points hopefully reduce down and business becomes quite good and consistent, but that doesn't really mean that you should just settle or sit back and not take action on doing more. Um, and it's, at those points that you really need to sit down and re-establish your visions and making sure that you're doing things with direction. Um, you know, one of the things that we love to look at and Brendan spoke to it earlier was the why, why we do things, you know, profit is great, but it should always be a result. It's basically the result of doing something that you love doing. Um, and, if you get the opportunity, take a look at Simon Sinek did a speech on TED Talks on Start With Why. And it basically talks to the point of P 
people don't buy your products, they don't even buy your services, but they will buy into the reason that you do something. If you have a strong belief and a strong love and passion for the way you do things and the reason you do things, then people will buy into that. And we see that in business all the time. You know, the success stories out there are those people that have a passion for change, for implementing something for other people. And that's not always easy to visualize or understand why we do things, but that's where we just try and spend as much time to try and establish what it is, because that's where you're going to get your greatest results. Make sure when you're developing your goals that they're smart, you know, it's trite and you always hear about it, but they need to be specific. You know, they need to have a doing word in them. It's got to be action orientated. At the end of it, you've got to be able to say, have I done it? Have I not done it? No, I could have possibly done it. It's got to really be really specific. Um, it needs to be measurable. So you, you need to be able to kind of see a change as a result. Um, it needs to be assignable so that it's not always on you. It needs to be relevant um, and it needs to be time-based. To have an open-ended goal is like having a mountain that just keeps moving forward in front of you. Um, and one thing I'll add to that is don't be afraid to change your goals. Like it's good to reevaluate and change them. Sometimes we set things for ourselves that aren't actually correct because it's a direction that we think we should be going, but then situations change, markets change, life changes, and it's okay to reestablish those goals and make sure that they fit with where we want to be right now. And that's one of the last things about doing now we're how and the one page plan is because in a month's time, that might not be working for my business anymore and I can change it and it's not an effort. It's really quick and easy. Um, how do we choose the next aspect of what we want to work on though? How do we become something that's driving towards something all the time? So Brendan's gonna go over mind mapping and thinking of things in a big picture kind of way so that we can kind of take some direction from that to drive the business in the future directions. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Karen. Right, eh? So, what I'm going to do, I'll just also share my screen. And yeah, I'm nowhere near as good at this. And I'll just get rid of that one for a start. And what I'm going to do is uh, so, as Karen said, this is very much, and I might just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave my video on. So you've got to watch me while I'm doing this. Okay, so a mind map is really a, a brainstorm. It's a scramble of ideas. And, it's, um, and what you're doing is you're just putting everything to page as best you can. And then it's something that you come back and work with later. So basically, I will do it like this. What you've got in the middle is you've got your business, right? Your business is made up of many things. And I mentioned them before, um, different aspects of your business. There's sales. And I apologise for my writing. I'm nowhere near as classy as Karen in relation to this. And that, and your sales is really broken up into two things. It's products and services. So in the case of Tim and Tina, it's their products. It's what they're selling. And it's their customers. So as Karen said, their customer base was mostly... Uh, smallish business, not really big corporates or anything like that. So this is the center of the universe in, in your business life. Um, then you've also got on the, on the other side of your business, you've got supply where everything comes from. And then other things to consider are your employees, another major aspect of your business. And then we've got finance, the cash, money side of it and then we've really got perhaps the most important part of the business which is you the owner and so what this is is the way it works and I've done this many times with my clients and um, and you do it generally in a boardroom situation with a whiteboard and you just you're getting them to throw ideas at you and as as they're talking and putting things to you you're just writing them down and it is and the, and the process is just don't think too deeply into anything just scramble ideas and things so for example 
um, I'd be asking the question. They say, you know, what's an important part of your business? They, they say the com customer. I say, who is your customer? And who is it now? And who is your target? And so we're just randomly writing down things. And then other things are, you know, how are you, how are you communicating with your customer? Are they coming in the door uh, or are you online? And what are you providing to them? You know, is it, what are you doing for your customer to enable, you know, make them want to buy? So you're servicing them. And why else do they buy from you? Is it price? Or are you uncompetitive on price? And then, so what we're doing is just establishing a number of things in relation to that. And also in relation to that, and it, it potentially it's, perhaps it's here, but something very, very important and becoming even more so, and it will continue to, is marketing. So marketing, how do you market? You know, is it print media? Sorry about the spelling. Um, is it social media now? And if it's social media, what's the best way? Is it Instagram or is it Facebook or is it Twitter or what is, so what we're doing is we're just scrambling notes and information and that type of thing. And that, and that's, and they, and after a little while they start to get a bit bored with customer or they drift or get a bit off track. So we go to the other side of things, which is the product. And so, you know, what are your product lines? Um, you know, is it, what's happening in your world, you know, what is new or what is around the corner, innovation. And ability to look forward is a very, very important thing in this brainstorming type situation. Um, and, and then in relation to your product lines, do you want to expand? You know, you currently you're selling, I think we said they're selling, you know, stock standard hardware, but you know, in Tim and Tina's case, they wanted to, um, you know, expand their turnover, say from a million in year one to 1.5 in year three or something like that. Are they going to do it just simply by getting the same people to walk in the door all the time? Perhaps not. So they might have to add new lines and that might be, they might want to compete with Bunnings and have a, a garden section because it might be along the same lines or, um, or whatever else it might be. So what this is doing is making you think about your business in different ways and all different aspects of your business. Employees, for example, and Karen mentioned how they've got issues um, with keeping employees. So who are your employees? And what are some of the issues? You know, is it dollars? Are you paying them enough? Or are you providing them with a great place to work? You know, Karen spoke about in Tim and Tina's case needing, wanting to be an employer of choice. But what does that even mean? Is it dollars or is it not dollars? Maybe it's um, work-life balance. Maybe it's other other intrinsic things that that are not dollars. Um, and other things is as the business grows, how many employees? So, and how do we find them? So, um, and you know it might be, and then you can expand on this different ways. You advertise, or you um, it might be you know word of mouth, for example. So you can see what's happening here. So from the finance side of things, you know, working capital is usually one of the biggest sort of frustrations in, a, in small business. So there's working capital is short-term finance, but there's also long-term finance for those big projects. Um, another aspect of the business, which I failed to talk about, which is the, you know, your premises and facilities. So, this is, once again, they're the main, these ones here, the main secondary type aspects of your business at that level, you can see them there. And so from there, you're expanding out. Um, the owners, you've got to talk about the owners. You know, what are they really looking for? Is it lifestyle? Um, as most people have been in business for a while, know that lifestyle disappears a fair bit when you get into business. Um, you know, things like workload. And of course, the dollars. And then the next one is, how do I get out? So what you can see here is you've just built a, just a scramble, a brainstorm of ideas. 
And so once you've got that, um, in, I'm not sure it's not necessarily in that same meeting, but what you do is you just talk a bit, a bit about a bit of detail and you say to them, you know, what really is your number one, whether it's a number one issue or number one goal. And so you um, might say, um, you know, it might be, the goals might be all around product lines. And so you just, just concentrate on that part of your business for the next two months or whatever. And that's where um, you, you might utilize the, the now where how type situation, but it's, it's about focus. And so, and then concentrate on that part of your business and really nail some of the issues around that. And then you can, might come back to this in, uh, I don't know, and, and say you've achieved what you're wanting to achieve within the two to three months. You go, what's the next most important thing? And obviously, if you know, if they hadn't um, sorted out their employee issues at that time, then it might be you come sort of along these lines and go, okay, well, we still haven't got our employees sorted. We've got to concentrate on this. Who do we want? How do we find them? Um, how? What's the best way to go about it? What do we have to provide? Um, you know, how do we advertise? Um, or do we start talking to our customers and say, do you know anyone who wants to work in our business? So there's the sort of how you might utilize this particular um, tool. And the, the amazing thing about this tool is that um, I've, I've been doing this for over 10 years and I have a client who's got this on an A3 on the back of his office door and he talks to it all the time. And it's almost unreadable at the moment because he's always scribbling on it and uh, and he's doing you know what what I've just done there, and he's he's going okay. Let's think about this. What do we do with that? And, you know what has my lifestyle sort of worked out, and how I want to work out. So you get the idea. So that's the that's the mind map. It's basically a brainstorm exercise. It's, it's a great thing to do, and I you know says, suggest you have a crack at crack at it. But it's not something you can do yourself. You really need to be facilitated somehow. So you need to have a bit of a um, yeah, probably someone like Karen or myself or any of the accountants here at Lincoln's are um, skilled in undertaking this type of exercise. So um, try it. And so there's there's just two or three or three tools really um, that uh, are potentially available and we've got a toolbox full of them. In fact, we've got a hardware store full of them. So, so just for... Um, now we'll just rest there. And so back to you, Karen, I think you had some other things to talk about. Thanks for that, Brendan. Um, so I think that's pretty much us for this series of uh, webinars, which, you know, thanks for bearing with us. It's We're pretty new to this as well, and we're still trying to discover the best harms and the best content to deliver on these things. And because of that, we'd really like your feedback. So we're probably gonna send out a, um, survey monkey or the like just asking if there would have been a more suitable time of day or day or content to be delivered because you know like we've mentioned we have quite a big um, team base so we cover a lot of different technical skills and we're happy to share all of that information as much as we can so we'll probably send something out shortly and likewise the video as always will be hosted on our website and sent out to everyone in a link but thank you for bearing with us while we fuddle our way through and it's been great so appreciate your time thanks thank you